Welcome. We're excited to share this video about Ava Marie. Ava turns one on November 27th, and it was quite a year. We've always wanted to have a big family, and so we were super excited, and we didn't know if we were gonna have a boy or girl this time, so little did we know there were gonna be some challenges we had never faced. Ava was due in January and was born two months early. The entire month of November, we were frequent at St. Anne's Hospital. A lot went on last year and we didn't really get the opportunity to tell everybody what was happening. Uh, people knew that something was going on with Ava, but they didn't know what. So here we are celebrating her first birthday and we couldn't be more happy or more blessed to have Ava Marie in our lives. So we put together this video just to tell Ava's story and to give you a little bit of insights into our lives over the past year. On Thursday, November 8th, at 28 weeks pregnant, I woke up with a headache that was just like really, really bad. And um, I had headaches throughout my pregnancy with Ava. That was pretty much the only pregnancy symptom I had was headaches. I've had headaches all of my life, so headaches were not out of the normal for me, but this one was really bad. So I called my doctor. I'd read about preeclampsia and I was a little paranoid while pregnant, so I wanted to make sure that nothing was going on. So I called my doctor and they had me go into St. Anne's. I thought that it was a little bit of overkill considering it was just a headache. I told Chia, let's just go to Kroger. Let's hop into pharmacy because her chief complaint was, I think my blood pressure might be high. So we went to Kroger, went to the pharmacy and her first reading came out and uh, we both knew it was high. So I thought, let me make sure this is accurate. I put my arm in there and my reading came back relatively normal. Then we had her take it one more time and we determined, all right, we're gonna go to St. Anne's. We went in and my blood pressure was high and they wanted to admit me to the hospital and do a 24 hour urine test. So Matt had to go to Cleveland that night and my mom kept the kids and I thought, okay, fine, I'll, I'll go home tomorrow evening. My 24 hour urine sample results came back and anything over 300 would be considered preeclampsia. Mine came back at 2,500. So obviously there was something going on and I knew I would not be leaving until they figured it out. They wanted to redo the sample so I'd be there at least another 24 hours. And when the results came back this time, they were right around 300. So one of the nurses had the lab pull the previous sample and it turned out they had made an error and the results were actually around 250. So I was still borderline preeclamptic, but nothing um, concerning. They took me to get a growth scan for the baby. At that point, it had never occurred to me that something might be wrong with the baby. I just assumed it was a typical thing that they do when someone's admitted and they're pregnant. I had never had anything more than a doctor's office ultrasound and so I didn't really know what to expect and it took a really long time and I don't know if that's typical or if it was just because there were issues but I was totally ignorant of the fact that anything was happening until after it was over and when the doctor came back and told me that the baby wasn't growing properly and had blood flow issues, I was just totally dumbfounded. Um, all my ultrasounds had been fine up till that point and I didn't know what questions to ask. I had no idea how this would affect the baby in the long run. I was just totally in shock. The doctor said it was nothing urgent and they would do twice weekly monitors. Every two weeks they would do a growth scan and then when the blood flow degraded to a certain extent or the baby's rate of growth stopped meeting a certain threshold, then they would have to deliver her. She said it's just a matter of when the baby is better off inside than out and they would try and keep her in as long as possible. Um, the next morning on Monday I was discharged. My doctor filed all the paperwork and Matt was on his way to pick me up and the fetal medicine doctor wanted to do another scan just to make sure the blood flow was still around where it was before for the baby and when they did the scan it had it had worsened to the extent that I wasn't gonna go anywhere they had to monitor the baby daily using the fetal Doppler um, for at least a couple hours a day and then they would also do bedside ultrasounds just to make sure the baby was moving that it was doing practice breathing and they had several criteria that they were looking for to make sure that the baby was progressing the way that they wanted it to I was very fortunate to have as much support as I did from my family. My mom, my dad, Sheena's mom, Sheena's dad, Miss KK came and she helped me out for a couple of weeks. We were relieved. They, they discharged us on the 24th, which was Thanksgiving, and allowed Sheena to come home. And we spent the entire day. We had all of our family together. We had a fantastic meal. We had a great day and then we checked Sheena back in later that night. 
So after two weeks, it was time for the next growth scan and the baby had not made very much progress at all. So they said, you know, it's, it's time to start thinking about uh, taking her out. The next blood flow scan, they saw that the flow had started to reverse and then it was officially time to take her out. At that stage of the pregnancy, they wouldn't have done any more ultrasounds. So we may have never found out about the condition, which is called velamentous cord insertion. And this is why Ava was born so small. They scheduled my C-section for November 27th, which was the next day. 12 hours prior to the C-section, they gave me magnesium sulfate to help prevent injury to the baby's brain. And after the magnesium started, I was really, really sick. I wasn't able to eat or drink, and I was just, just terribly ill. It was at this point where we decided to pick the baby's name. <laughs> so luckily I had put together a list months earlier, and we had a boy's name already picked out because we thought that she was gonna be a boy. We did not have a girl name we thought well just in case let's pick out a girl's name and uh, he saw Ava on my list and he was like oh I really like Ava and I was like okay that, that's fine I'm so sick you can pick whatever name you want and um, the song Ave Maria came to mind and that's how she became Ava Marie I remember a lot of people were praying for me and I had met a lady in the elevator earlier and her daughter was a couple rooms down from me and she and I had chatted a bit while I was there. I vaguely remember her coming in and praying for me and I was just so sick. I don't remember hardly anything that she said, but I remember it giving me a sense of peace that she was there and what she was saying. And even though it didn't make me feel physically better, I do feel like mentally and emotionally she really helped me. The time for the C-section came. I was so sick that I passed out while they were trying to give me the spinal. A natural birth wasn't an option since it would be too traumatic for the baby. So I was 31 weeks pregnant when they uh, delivered her on the 27th. When Ava was born, I don't think that I've ever been so happy to hear a baby cry. She was 2.01 pounds when she was born and 14 inches. She was on room air from the very start, which everybody was really surprised by because she was so small. Uh, she had to have a CPAP machine to help her remember to breathe, but she never needed oxygen. Her APGAR scores were absolutely perfect. At the time, Sheena still had extremely high blood pressure. She still had really bad migraines. And so what they do in these situations, they give magnesium. When she has magnesium, she's unable to be around the baby for 24 hours. Ava's first 30 hours of life were spent solely with her daddy. I can't begin to explain what it's like to hold a two pound baby. It was the most amazing, difficult, and beautiful experience of my life. There's no instruction manual. Over the next two months, we would get to know every doctor in that hospital. And we were frequented with beeps and sounds and alarms and things that we never knew we would go home and dream about. Never seen a diaper so small. It's, it, I don't even know how to describe that. I mean, it, it's literally, it would fit on a baby doll. It just seemed like every time we selfishly wanted to get her home. Divinely, something would happen. It was almost like God was stepping in through some scenario. Sheena got admitted. It was a lab error. For that reason, and only that reason, we had an ultrasound, which is what revealed the actual challenge. There were three times that she was supposed to come home from the NICU. Uh, they had her hooked up to a heart monitor and she would have these heart rate decelerations and whenever they would last over 15 seconds and her heart rate would drop below 60, then she would get stuck for another five days in the NICU. So that happened periodically, which is why she had to stay in the NICU for the full two months instead of coming home a little sooner. So each time she had one of the decelerations, she was able to recover on her own and everybody was really comfortable with her leaving. Um, when she did, uh, she was exactly two months early and she spent two months in the NICU exactly. So she came home on her due date of January 27th, 2019. Uh, when she came home, she was four pounds and eight ounces and she cried a lot. It was a lot different than what she was used to in the NICU. I, I imagine it was much like leaving the womb. We were so excited 
and so nervous at the same time. So we brought her home to meet her brother and sister. They were very excited. They hadn't been able to meet her yet because no children were allowed in the NICU. It was cold and flu season, so you know they try and limit the number of germs brought in. They had heard all about her. They knew that mommy was gone for a while because Ava, and they had been to visit me in the hospital, but um, they were quite excited. Well, Adeline was quite excited to meet her new baby sister. <laughs> Bodie was a little less excited. Ava cried quite a bit, and I just remember Addie saying, I don't think she likes us very much. <laughs> Bodie did not want anything to do with her. He did not want to hold her. He was kind of curious about her, but he did not really want anything to do with her. All of that's changed now. They both adore her. They both want to take care of her and they want to hold her and they play with her all the time. And she has just really become an essential part of our family. And it's just amazing what she went through to get here. She's our little miracle baby. <laughs> Since she's been home, it hasn't been without challenge, but she has been amazing. She's a very sweet, excitable, happy, beautiful baby girl. So Ava is now crawling. She can stand with help. Um, she is a, a ways away from walking, but she gets where she needs to go. She is eating solid foods finger foods. She has four teeth. We're just really proud of how far she's come and can't wait to see how far she's going to go in the future. She's so sweet. It was so exciting whenever I first heard that she was on the growth curve. They tend to take premature babies and then they age adjust them. And so she's really just, she's meeting all of her milestones that she's starting to climb up. It's great to see her crawling around, just so sweet with a great demeanor and a lot of drive and energy and healthy and happy. So we've had just an amazing first year with her and we can't wait to see what the future holds. Happy birthday, Ava. Happy birthday, Ava. We love you.